Hi everyone, Jeremy Simon here with 3D Universe. And today I wanted to show you one of the more advanced features in Ultimaker Cura that allows you to customize your settings for different regions in a model. So you can actually have different settings in different parts of your models. And I want to show you how to do that here because a lot of people aren't aware that this is possible. So what you do is load an object. In this case, I'm using one that's available on Thingiverse. This is part of a series of 3D printing terminology visual displays. So the one you're looking at here is a model that's used to demonstrate the concept of infill percentages. So we want to print this such that each one of these little square shapes on top are printed with the indicated amounts of infill. And because we want to be able to see that infill, we also want it to print where that the top portion uh, that top layer is, is basically left, left off. In other words, we want zero top layers, and that way that, that infill inside of the object will be visible. So the way that we would do this is we would set up our, our default settings. So let's say we want to go with a fairly high quality, 0.1 millimeter layer height. Uh, we're going to set all the other settings up pretty much default. In this case, we'll just choose a default, say 20% infill, because that's just really going to apply to the base of this object, and you'll see why in a moment. Um, the rest of this will leave pretty much defaults. Um, and we'll go ahead and let it slice as is. Now if we let it slice with these default settings, we go to our layer view, we're going to see pretty much what you'd expect. The whole object has been sliced at 20% infill, and that includes those top regions, and the top regions are then covered with their top layers, so that's not quite what we want. But we're just getting started. That was just our base sort of default settings. Now I'll go back to solid view. Now what we're going to do is we're going to customize the settings for each one of these little regions on top. And the way that we do that is using um, a, a feature over here on the left for per model settings. So over here on the left, we've got an option for per model settings. But in order to apply that, we need to first have additional models to apply these settings to. So the easiest way to do this, you can import a model. You can, If you have an STL file of a cube or something, you can just import that and use it. But an easier way is to just take advantage of this support block tool down here on the left. And we talk about this in another video, but here we're going to make use of it just to create our, our geometry. So I'll click on that and then click somewhere on our object and it plants this little cube for us there. Now what I want to do is resize that a little bit. So right now both of those objects are selected. So I'm going to click over here to deselect and now I'm just going to click to select just that object. I'm going to resize it. Let's just make it about that big so that it'll cover this square. And now I'm going to reposition it. Oops, I selected the wrong object. There we go. We're going to reposition it so that it's just overlapping that square region. And I'm going to move it up so that it's only affecting that upper area. And obviously I would, I would get in and do a, a more detailed job uh, if this was for real, but for demo purposes that'll do. Now, for that region, I can select that, and if I go to Per Model Settings on that object, notice that right now the mesh type is set to Don't Support Overlap with Other Models because it's a support blocker. We're just going to change it to this option here, Modify Settings for Overlap with Other Models. And now I can use that to change settings. So if I click on Select Settings, I can change any settings I want here. So the first one I'll do is Infill. If I change infill density, I can make that 0%, but I also want to change the number of top layers. So I'm going to put in top, bottom. I'll just do top layers and close this. Set top layers to 0. Set infill density to 0 because this particular region is to demonstrate no infill. Now when it slices, and we go to our layer view. You'll see that it is now printing that section with zero infill. It's still printing the letters in the middle, but it's not printing a top layer, so it's going to be left open, and we can now see what it looks like to print something with zero infill. So we'll do just one more to show how this works by applying settings to different areas. Go back to solid view. And I'm just going to repeat the process. Select my base object, select support blocker, drop one in here, deselect everything by clicking over here on the side, and now just select that one new object and rescale it, same as I did before, do about the same size, reposition it.
And then just as before, we'll do per model settings, change it to modify settings for overlap with other models, and we'll select the same settings, infill, density, and top layers. Top layers, we want zero again, but this time we want the infill density to be 30% for this region. Let it go ahead and slice. Now we go back to layer view. And if we zoom in, now we'll see that that object is being printed with 30% infill. The other one has zero infill. And we could proceed to do the same thing for these other areas and print each of those with a different amount of infill. And you can use the same approach to customize any of the other settings that are available for any given region of your object. So there's all kinds of ways that you can apply this. Maybe there's one part of your object that you want to have increased strength, so you can use more infill or thicker walls. There might be a part of your object that you want to print at a slower speed. There's all kinds of things that you can do using this approach. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.